Hi, I'm Wendy from Shiny Happy World, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make this zebra applique block. So this is the current pattern in the Funny Faces Quilt Block of the Month Club. And when I say current, it is December 1st, 2022. And this is the pattern that's going to be exclusive to the club for the entire month of December. So if you're already in the club, you should have already gotten an email with a link to download the pattern, or you can just log into your account and it'll be right there at the top of the view my downloads page. If you're not in the club yet, but you join any time in December 2022, this is the pattern that you're going to get instant access to. Now, if you're watching this video a lot later and it's after December, you'll be able to find this pattern in the shop at shinyhappyworld.com sometime probably the end of January. So here's how to make it. All right, this is the video where I'm gonna show you how to do the zebra, how to assemble the zebra block without using a light box. And for that, I've needed to transfer all of the dotted lines that you see on the pattern pieces onto the fabric side of each piece. So for the eyes, I used just a Sharpie because it's a, a permanent Sharpie. It doesn't matter that the black is not, it's not gonna show through the solid black fabric that I put on the top. But for all of the stripes, the positions for the stripes, I marked that with a pencil. The, I normally would use chalk, but the chalk didn't really show up the white chalk on the white, mostly white fabric. And so I ended up using a pencil for that. So we are gonna start with the shoulder piece. So um, all of these numbers on the pieces will show will match up to numbers on this placement guide. For a light box, you would be using this guide to show you exactly where they place and also to show you in what order the different pieces um, get laid down in. For not using a light box, we just are gonna use that as a guide for which piece is which. It'll be helpful especially for all the stripes, the triangle stripes around, especially on his face. So we're gonna start out with the shoulders and I just line the flat edge of that up with the flat edge of the raw edge of the bottom of this block. I'll scooch it up just a bit so you can see that. All right, and then we're gonna put his muzzle in place. So we're gonna build from the edge of the block up. So the muzzle just overlaps, there's a line here that I transferred from the shoulders. And once I lay the muzzle down, once it covers that, I know I have a good amount of overlap. We're gonna do the same thing for the head. So this line is telling me how far behind that muzzle I need to tuck it in in order to get a good amount of overlap. So that'll be the next thing we place. And then, Again, working up from the bottom, we're gonna put his mane in there. Since he's got a front view, we're only gonna see the mane uh, from just that little bit of a sliver of it there, but they do have a mane that stands up straight. Now, one ear goes in here. And ear number two is tucked behind on this side. All right, and now let's start, you know what, let's give him some nostrils. There are two, there are four ovals in this, two nostrils and two eyes. And the nostrils are identical, the two nostrils are the same and the two eyes are the same but the nostrils are not the same as the eyes. So you'll wanna use those numbers to make sure that you're putting the smaller nostril pieces where they go and the very slightly wider eye pieces where they go. So the nostrils are 19 and 20 and the eyes are 11 and 12. So there he goes, now he looks a little little friendlier. Now let's start getting some stripes in. So 21 is that center stripe on his forehead. We're just gonna line that up so that the 
edge, the curved edge of it lines up with the curved edge of the top of his head. So now we've got piece working down this side, we've got piece number seven. And you could move these stripes around, it's not a big deal, but the curve does match the curve of the side of the head. So if you use um, the stripe pieces that where they go, it'll just be easier for you to match that up. So this is piece number six. And then piece number five. And now on the other head, side of the head, we've got eight. And these very faint pencil lines are showing you where these, exactly where these stripes go. So there's nine. I bumped that one. and 10. And now we've just got some shoulders. So on this side, these are 15 and 14. So 15 matches the curve up top and 14 is lower on his shoulders. And then we've got 16 is higher on his shoulders. And 17 is the last piece. So this guy's got a lot of pieces, but they're not very tricky to place. It's just all those stripes. All right, so I'm gonna Carefully carry this over to the ironing board, fuse everything in place, and then I'll do all of the outline stitching, and I'll come back and I'll show you the finished block and also show you a couple of different color options that I did. All right, here is the finished block. So I've fused all the pieces down. I've done all of the outline stitching. I also added some catch lights to his eyes. I just used a little dot of fabric paint, but there is a link in the pattern to a video that, or a post that tells you all about different uh, tools and techniques that you can use to add those little catch lights. There's, uh, you can do hand embroidery, machine embroidery. My favorite is the fabric paint because it's just quick and easy and I do like that it makes kind of a shiny little light. I use a glossy, uh, glossy three-dimensional fabric paint, so that makes a nice look. So that's this guy, and I wanna show you the same zebra in a couple of other fabrics, oh, which reminds me. So the background here, this is one of the blenders from the Grizzly collection that's all different shades of brown. I'm working on a new version of the Safari quilt pattern, and all of the background blocks are going to be different Grizzly blenders. So the backgrounds will be all different shades of brown, all with these tone-on-tone. Uh, designs to them. And then the zebra, um, all of the prints in the zebra are from the, the Animal Kingdom Blenders collection. The whites are all from the Elephant Blenders, which are all different. These are both, the, uh, you can find both of these, actually the easiest way to find them is the Salt and Pepper Blenders collection, which has all of my black on black prints and my white on white prints. So that's a great place to go and look for zebras. So here's what else we've got in different colors. So this is another black and white zebra. So same thing, the salt and pepper collection for the black on blacks and white on whites. But this print I used, this is from the strawberry blenders, which are part of the, the farmer's market color palette. And I'm working on another just collection of fun animals. They're not gonna be tied to a specific theme, but they are all going to use different shades of strawberry in the background. So the background of this quilt is gonna be all different shades ranging from very light pink to a pretty dark, almost red pink. And then I have one more because zebras don't have to be black and white. So this one uses the Ruby blenders, which are part of the Gemstones pa color palette. 
And so all of these are different shades of ruby. And as long as you use dark, the darker shade, where I've used black in the main zebra and the lighter shades where I've used white, it still is going to look like a zebra, even though it's not black and white. So on this one, like I said, these are all from the Ruby Blenders in the Gemstones color palette. And this background is one of the pre-printed quilt blocks that I have. So these quilting lines are actually printed on the fabric. So you just stitch right over top of them. And that is also from the Gemstones collection. This is a, the this one is from the Gemstones Dark palette. So all of the blocks that you'll get, you'll get a yard printed with 12 inch squares with these lines printed on it. And all of them will be colors from the Gemstones palette and all dark shades of those colors. So they'll work really well as backgrounds for a quilt. So that is the Funny Faces Quilt Block of the Month pattern for December, 2022. I'm Wendy from Shiny Happy World, and I will see you next time.